obviously uh, that that loss in that world cup and the subsequent match which we lost to new zealand also brought about uh, a complete change in the way uh, our top order is going to approach uh, t20 cricket there are some difficult calls to make the number one uh, challenge would be to get uh, obviously rohit rahul uh, and virat uh, they are likely to be a top 3 and in a big game like this nothing brings out the best out of virat than a big game so i think i'm, I'm hoping for that again and uh, virat just go and enjoys his batting out in the middle Well, it's that time of the year where we, of course, talk about big tournaments and the Asia Cup is a no-brainer. And we have our Shri Dhar who returns to our screens. First and foremost, Shri, looking dapper as ever. How have you been? I've been very fine. Thank you, Avanish. It's been a bit. It's been a bit since I've uh, come on the studio now. There's no better time than now to come and uh, talk about the big game coming up uh, on Sunday. Yeah, here's the real meat, isn't it? Because the previous series that we covered with you was, of course, just building up to the Asia Cup. And with the big names back, it makes for a fascinating conversation. Before we get started, of course, let's ask everyone to subscribe to the YouTube channel. And not to forget, download the Cricket.com app because it's going to be your one-stop destination for this year's Asia Cup and much more building towards the World Cup too. Right, first and foremost, we have to ask Sridhar about... The defeat that he was part of with the Indian team last year in the T20 World Cup to Pakistan and Dubai. They face each other in the similar venue. What was the biggest takeaway, Shri, before we pick the bones about this year's competition? Obviously, uh, that, that loss in that World Cup and the subsequent match which we lost to New Zealand also brought about uh, a complete change in the way uh, our top order is going to approach uh, T20 cricket. And we saw that straight away after after that tournament, uh, and Rohit took over as captain. That was one of the biggest takeaways, and uh, also 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 that uh, batting first, batting first. Uh, our record was not as much as he wanted; it's around 66 to 70 percent. So uh, that was another thing which uh, has really 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 uh, improved now after that uh, World Cup game. So yeah, these two were the big takeaways, and uh, I think a lot of Areas have been corrected and uh, I can't wait for this game. This is going to be a big game. I echo those words and look, we, no one wants to look back at that particular game unless you're a Pakistan fan because it was 10 wickets that they did us that time. But uh, I want to ask you about this Indian team, right? And many people are talking about the playing 11 for Sunday's game. Have you already kind of decided who's playing in your head? And if so, who are those 11 members of Team India? <laughs> Uh, it's, a, it's a tough call for uh, the team management to take. There are some difficult calls to make. The number one uh, challenge would be to get uh, obviously Rohit, Rahul uh, and Virat. Uh, they are likely to be a top three in a big game like this. Uh, I don't see that uh, moving away. Well, it will be a brave move to do that. And it will be a bold move as well. And the other challenge with the think tank uh, is also uh, whether they want to play Dinesh Karthik uh, or not. That's another challenge. And obviously, most of the bowlers pick themselves and uh, all the bowlers have got enough game time in the recent past. So, these are the two biggest challenges in terms of the playing level. So, now Virat is back, back in focus. But uh, he's been working hard. I'm sure he'll come back much more fresher than what he was and he'll be itching and raring to go. KL Rahul is back from injury. So, he will have to quickly come into the team. I think he's the vice captain. So, he's a no, it's a no-brainer that he'll be picked. Uh, he, he'll have to come in and, uh, straight away slightly pick up on his initial uh, strike rate, you know, he's someone who uh, bats with a strike rate of more than 140, but his initial first 10-12 balls is somewhere he'll have to pick it up uh, with the new uh, uh, template with which the Indian team is playing. So, it's not very difficult for them, he will do it very easily as well. Uh, and uh, and that's the top three with Rohit Kale and uh, Virat and then you have Suri Kumar Yadav and then you have Ardik. So, that leaves you with uh, uh, either Rishabh or, or, or Dinesh. I mean, I was going to ask you that. It'll come down to pretty much the wicket keeping slot there. And no Bumrah, of course. And that's uh, a no-brainer where we could perhaps fit in an Arvesh and Bhuvi. And I'll talk about the bowling in just a bit. But you mentioned Virat there, returning to, of course, uh, the Indian side. How 
bigger test would this tournament be for him? We saw him in the nets. He is preparing and training hard, sweating it out. Virat Kohli, what's in his mind right now? What do you kind of understand he's going to do? I think nothing is changing. He's batting well. It is not a test for him at all. I think uh, I would like to think that way. It's not a test for him. He just has to go there and enjoy his cricket, uh, like what he has always then done. And his preparations are on point. He's not someone who's going to go and bat for hours together in the nets. I, I've seen Virat in the in the prime of his form. He just bats for 25, 30 minutes, gets done with what he wants to do, and he's up and ready. And a big match like this will bring out the best out of him. Nothing brings out the best out of Virat than a big game. So I think I'm, I'm hoping for that again. And uh, Virat just go and enjoys his batting out in the middle. Yeah, I mean, hopefully, from an Indian point of view, Virat Kohli does do wonders in this tournament and then builds up nicely the World Cup. We'll talk about Pakistan in just a bit, but like I promised the viewers, a bowling chat on India with regards to no Bumrah. Now, how will they cope without him? We've seen Bhuvi come to the fore recently. Archdeep's been a big positive. Who would be your starting bowlers in this eleven? Good question. Good question. Uh, who are the bowlers who will pick themselves in your opinion? I mean, Bhuvi straight away. Yeah. And then I think Arsh Arshdeep uh, has been doing well. Uh, so, we have Ashal is injured. Bumrah not part of the squad. There's Avesh. Avesh Khan has been a uh, little blow hot, blow cold. So, uh, whether the Ding Tang is going to back him in a big game like this. Remember last time uh, uh, we played Pakistan at the same venue. Shami had a bad day. It was not his best day of the tournament as well. So, he went for a few because they're going to come up with a very formidable opening pair of, uh, I think, Babar Azam and Mohamed Rizwan. Who, who did the job for Pakistan last time we played? We played them. So, uh, whoever picks, whoever plays in the bowling attack, uh, everyone has got the skill sets to do well. What is more important is they bowl to the game plan. They bowl to an area what they have decided before the game. In, in terms of, uh, they they would have uh, sat down and watched videos and a lot of data about the opponent batters. So, they need to stick to the plan which they want to bowl. It is, that is the most important thing in big games because the, 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 the big match atmosphere, the pressure can slightly cloud a bowler's mind and uh, make him do certain things which are not planned. So, whoever plays, I think all of them have got the skill sets. What is important is they stick to the game plan. They should clearly know what the tactics is against each batter. And they should be able to execute it to the T. That is what Rohit would be expecting. Absolutely. And no one can disagree with you there. And good choices and pertinent points as well. Now, on the contrary, Shaheen Shah Afridi has been ruled out. Now, that's a big positive from an India perspective. But a big jolt for Pakistan. How will they cope without him, given that India have been facing nightmares from Pakistan of left-hand pacers of previous years? I mean, yeah, I remember even way back in 2015 when India played Pakistan in the World Cup, uh, we had uh, three left-arm fast bowlers in the squad. They had three left-arm fast bowlers in the squad, but we did well against them. And uh, I mean, Mohamed Amir bowled well against us in the Champions Trophy final when he came over the storms and swung the ball in to take a couple of wickets. And uh, Shaheen Shah Afridi in the World Cup, uh, in, in the World T20 uh, first game in 2021, it was a bit of a sticky wicket. It's not an excuse, but. Uh, it is not a it is not a bad first wicket. It was a tough challenge, and Afridi bowled brilliantly in that game. We've got to give him his credit. So uh, him not being there will slightly ease the pressure of the Indian uh, uh, batters. I think uh, Mohammad Wasim is another left-arm fast bowler. If I'm not mistaken, he will also look to come and bowl quick and uh, and swing the ball in. So let's see how that goes. So they they've got a battery of fast bowlers. And uh, they will come up with the plans to swing it into the pads of our of our uh, uh, right hand uh, opening uh, batters. So it will be interesting. I think Pakistan have got enough firepower to challenge India's top out. Okay, big call that. Anyone else uh, to you in terms of winning this Asia Cup? Is it going to be India, Pakistan, and if not them, maybe in Afghanistan, or is that wishful thinking? I think it's an India-Pakistan series disguised. <laughs> The name of an Asia Cup. If you see the, if you see the, if you see the way the draws are, India and Pakistan are in the same group, so that will be one game, and then the Super Force, uh, there would be another India-Pakistan game. I'm guessing, 
and then uh, the whole the whole uh, world is hoping for an India Pakistan final. So it's almost going to be a best of three uh, India Pakistan games. But having said that, I think you cannot discount teams like uh, Pak- uh, Bangladesh, uh, Afghanistan, and Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka have been playing some competitive cricket recently. They beat Australia in a couple of games, and Afghanistan. All the players are pros in T20. They pro around the world in various leagues. They've got. A formidable T20 spin attack. They have to back it up with their batting. And Bangladesh has got a new support staff in uh, Sridharan Sriram. He knows a thing or two about uh, T20 cricket, and they'll be eager to uh, make some amends after their dismal World Cup uh, at the same venue uh, a few a few months ago. So they will come out on guns blazing as well. So uh, yes, as much as I would like to predict an India Pakistan final, uh, it's going to be a, it's going to be a Tough challenge getting there for both teams. Okay, let's see how it all unfolds. Remember, the first game is on Saturday. You guys can catch it on cricket.com in terms of the live blog and the analysis. And we're doing a special watch along for the India Pakistan on Sunday evening. So that's going to be a first for us and hopefully a lot of fun for you guys back home. That's all from our Sridhar, who, mind you, we will pick his brains throughout the Asia Cup about lots of things. And there's going to be great content as ever, including a dressing room story from not just the Manchester win against Pakistan, but also the Dubai loss, all of that and much more with this man himself, a.k.a. Sherlock Holmes. On that comical note, time to say goodbye on cricket.com, but plenty of match footage as well. As you can see, Sridhar is waving us goodbye. We'll see you soon.